Well, we're, anybody remember our big things from deadlift we talked about last week? Were two main things that we really touched on. Skipper's one, huh? Neutral spine, and what was the other one? Search of teeth. Tension. Tension, right? So, very similar things are going to happen here with the squat. The real big things we have to think about yes, tension, yes, neutral spine, but we have to add a component in. The deadlift, the bar doesn't move a whole lot. And because you really don't have to move it that far, you don't have to worry about as much stability. Now, with a bar that's going to move a little bit more, it's farther from the ground, it's got a little bit more uh, leeway to have some space issues. So what we're going to have to look at is one, neutral spine. We're going to try to create tension at the hips. So we create almost a more secure base. And we're really going to emphasize balance. Okay, one of the things we see, right, and this is where we're going to talk about certain myths here in a second, especially when we talk about where your knees go, because some people will teach this and they'll tell you, don't let your knees pass your toes. Okay, anybody ever heard that? All right, well, it's a bunch of bull crap, because basically what we figured out is that it decreases the stress of your knees by about 25% when you don't let your knees pass your toes, but it increases the stress of your spine by a thousand. So we have this big trade-off. So when we look at really trying to maximize this movement here, what we're gonna look at is making sure we're gonna keep a bar over the center of our foot. That might mean for some of you, your knees have to come forward a little bit more, but as long as we have a really grounded base, then we're gonna be fine. I'm gonna face out this way for a sec, just so you can see it. We're gonna talk, actually, let's see this. I'll face the other way, just so you can see the position of the back. The first thing we're going to do is we call a high bar position, all right? So when we talk about the shoulder, we talk about your traps, right? They make your shoulders do this, all right? You ever see uh, Jim walking around campus and his neck's all like this after wrestling practice because he's just spent three hours doing this all the time, right? You can kind of see he doesn't have a whole lot of uh, neck there. It just kind of goes from his shoulders to his ears. Those are your traps, <laughs> right? But it's true. It's true, right? So you, your traps, basically, if you've ever seen squat pads like to go on a bar, they're basically just your substitution for traps. I don't like them because, well, if you don't learn what the connection to your body is and create that space, more instability. So when we look at this, what you're going to try to do is, one, we're trying to bring our shoulders back together, but we're not necessarily going down as much. We'll talk a little bit more at down when we do low bar, but we're going to try to put that bar we're going to measure our hands out so we have these little rings, we have the center neural. Try to just space your hands, use those markings to space your hands out evenly. Alright, so I'm going to take, I'm just going to pick a random one here. We're going to try to bring the shoulders back, and we're going to try to place that bar right across the tops of our shoulder blades. Okay, so I get this little connection here at the end of my shoulder, my chromium process. I get it right at the top of the back, and so those traps act as a pad. Now, we looked at creating a neutral spine, so watch what happens at the hip, right? We take the hip, and we squeeze the glutes forward, and we lock everything in here, okay? So when we start to look at the wider spine, I don't want to be here. If you go on Instagram, you see all these fit influencers, and they squat with their butt out like this. It doesn't help us out. So, we neutralize the spine, we bring our hips into alignment. All you're doing is really just standing up from there, and you're going to try to take just two steps. Step, step. Feet are going to go just outside your shoulders. All right? For some people, it may be pretty narrow. Now I'm just going to turn this so it makes it a little easier to see. Depending on the shape of your pelvis, it's going to change a little bit. So, if I have a really narrow pelvis, it might be right underneath your hips. If you've got a really wide pelvis, right, which tends to be a little more, like the males tend to have this happen a little bit more, all right, you might get a little bit wider. Toes are going to point either forward or just slightly out, all right. From this position, what we're looking for, feet stay flat, we're going to try to keep this bar over the center of your foot. All right, what it tends to look like is I keep everything nice and tight here, and we're gonna break the hips and knees simultaneously. 
right? So instead of sitting back and down, because that's where you see people to go, we might arch their back and do this. What we're going to try to do is keep everything flat, and we're going to try to sit the hips back and let the knees go forward. I'm sinking down into this position where everything's balanced, right? So I've got that flat foot, neutral spine, the chest stays up, and then we're driving up, okay? The one thing to think about here, we talk about tension, it's gonna help you if you start to pull on the bar, right? So I don't wanna be just like totally relaxed. You'll see this happen, all right? Pull the bar against your back, everything stays neutral. If you take a deep breath in right at the top, Make your belly full of air, down, up. There's a weird little thing you can think about, but if you try to find the floor with your feet, push your arches into the ground and spread the floor apart, okay? So it's almost like I'm gonna try to have my foot, try to make it as wide as possible, and I'm gonna push the arches of my foot into the ground and spread the floor. If you feel that, you should start to feel all of a sudden all this tension start to happen here at your hips. So then when you start to go down, spreading the floor apart, grabbing back up, it's going to create that tension. That's the high bar back squat. All I want is like two sets of five. Okay, because then we're going to go into low bar, and then we'll talk about front squat, and then we'll really talk about what the best thing for you. Okay? So, find your rack. We've got four of them right here. Pair up with a group, right, and partners, be watching, right? Somebody watch from behind, somebody watch from the side, somebody watch from, yeah, you know, well, don't watch from the front because so they can see themselves in the mirror, okay? <laughs> Create tension, neutralize everything, break the hips and knees at the same time, all right? So you let those knees go forward a little bit and sit back and down, just trying to keep that bar over the center foot. When we look at going deep, for some people, this might be the deepest they can go without losing tension. And they go here, they start to get what we call butt wake, right? And so the hips literally will tuck underneath there and they get around back, all right? We're only gonna go as low as what you can keep tension with. Because once you lose tension, that's where we actually open ourselves up for injury, okay? Find some space, partner up with people that are your height or close to it, and then set these racks, right? When we look at this, you set the rack to where it's gonna be good for the shortest person in the group. So tall people, you get a little screwed on this one. But that way, when you walk in here, you don't have somebody who's like having like tiptoe, you know, like tiptoe out of the rack. We'd rather still squat it down a little bit more, brace, okay? Everything nice and tight. One, two, you go right into that stance. You might have to adjust it a little bit once you're there. Two to three sets of five. That's all we're looking for.